All right, let's look at the symbol uh, for the operational amplifier. So what we use here is this triangular type of shape, okay? We have two input terminals, an inverting input, so we'll call that the inverting input, and we have another input which is the non-inverting input. Input. We have an output, we're going to call that output V out. And the operational amplifier has a power supply, two power supplies, and we have a, or typically two power supplies, so we have a plus VCC, and over here we have a minus VEE. These power supplies typically have values of plus and minus. 15 volts. Normally, when we're actually analyzing op-amp circuits, we don't actually show this power supply connection. All right, I'm going to say this voltage over here, we'll call it V1, and I'm going to call this voltage over here V2. The voltage between these two terminals then is really the difference between V1 and V2, and I'm going to define that voltage as VD uh, between here and here. All right. So what does that mean? That means VD then is simply equal to V2 minus that V1. The output voltage, V out, is equal to, uh, it's going to be the open loop gain of that operational amplifier, which we call AVOL, times the voltage uh, between these two terminals, which is VD. Or we could express this as AVOL basically times the V2 minus the V1. All right. Now, look, let's look at just a little bit more detail. Uh, still talking about an ideal operational amplifier. All right, so let me redraw the symbol. Okay, and there it is. And we're going to say effectively between those two terminals, those two input terminals, we're going to model this as having an input resistance and we're going to call that input resistance RI. All right, we're going to have a voltage controlled generator and we're going to call its value here, we're going to say it's AVOL times the difference between uh, those two voltages, which remember we said was VD plus minus, okay? So that's VD. We're going to model this as having some output resistance sitting here, and we're going to call that output resistance, we're simply going to call it RO, and there is our output voltage V out. All right, let's label a couple of currents here. We're going to call this current going into this terminal, we're going to say it's IB1, and the current going into this terminal, we're going to call IB2. All right. In the case, then, of the ideal operational amplifier, that input resistance, RI, is assumed to be infinite. This output resistance, RO, assumed to be zero. The open loop gain, AVOL, we're going to assume that to be incredibly large, infinity. And then, of course, the currents, IB1 equal to zero, and the current IB2 equal to zero. So this represents basically the ideal operational amplifier. Okay, let's uh, see if we can have a look at an example here. All right, so we'll take an op amp circuit. Um, output voltage, V out. I'm going to show you the power supply values. I'm going to say this is plus 15, and this is our minus 15 connection. Uh, here's my inverting, here's my non-inverting input. All right? Now, V1, I'm going to make, e make equal to 1 volt. And then, so this is V1. Uh, V2 over here, I'm going to make that equal to 1.1 1 .1 volts. All right, now this is 
as I indicated before, it's really an open loop uh, configuration of this operational amplifier. In other words, there's nothing of the output that is connected back to either one of these inputs. So this is operating now in an open loop mode. So imagine we have this situation. My question might be, what is V out under these circumstances? Again, let's assume this is our ideal operational amplifier with uh, what that infinite gain, that infinite voltage gain, and of course an infinite input resistance and a zero output resistance. All right, let's look at VD. The voltage VD is equal to, well, remember VD is defined between what? We, we define that plus minus, that was our VD. So it's really the difference between these two voltages. So we said that was really V2 minus V1, which in this case is what, 1.1 uh, minus one, which gives me a value of 0 0.1 volts. All right, AVOL, as I said, we're assuming to be infinity. So therefore, that output voltage V out is going to be this AVOL uh, multiplied by VD. So that is equal to what? Infinity uh, multiplied by 0 0.1 volts. Well, what does that equal? Well, that kind of implies that the output voltage should be infinity. Well, it can't be infinity. It's going to be limited by what? It's going to be limited by the power supply in this case. Um, it's going to be that plus 15. And so V out then is going to be close to 15 volts. Okay. All right, let's take another example. In this case, we've now got V1 equal to what? 0.1 volts and V2 is equal to uh, 0 0.09 volts. So let's see, what is VD in this case? Well, remember VD I'll write that in again. VD is between here and here. So VD is really equal to what? The V2, which is 0 0.09, uh, minus the V1, which is 0 0.1, okay? And so that gives me a value of what? Minus, okay, 0 0.01 volts. So what, once again, let's see if we can uh, write down what the output voltage is. The output voltage then, is equal to AVOL, remember we're going, talking about an ideal operational amplifier, multiplied by VD, and so this is equal to what? Infinity multiplied by a minus 0 0.01. All right, so what does that mean the output is? That means the output then is equal to, and it can't be a minus infinite value, and so it's gonna be limited by the power supply, and so it's gonna be very close to this minus 15 volts. All right, let's uh, look at another example here. Um, here is my operational amplifier in its open loop mode, V out. Uh, here's my plus 15 power supply, minus 15 power supply here, and my two inputs, inverting input and this guy over here, non-inverting input. Let's say, I'm going to call this guy V1. Um, let's say now I actually put a value on here and I'm going to hold that value and I'm going to call that value um, V reference. And I'm going to say I'm going to make that V reference equal to 4 volts. Now let's have a look at what might happen um, to the output in relation to us changing that input voltage. Well, if this input voltage over here is less than what we're calling in this example, the reference voltage of four volts, what is the output gonna be? That means that this guy here is bigger than V1. So if this voltage here is larger than V1, then that output voltage over there is going to be what? It's going to be plus 15, all right? So let's just write that down. So in other words, if V1 is actually less than uh, the reference voltage, V reference, which in this case, the reference voltage has a value of four volts, then we're going to say that that output voltage over there is gonna be in a saturated value of 15 volts. Okay, 
Now, what about the case though when V1 becomes greater than the four volts? Okay, so if V1 now is actually greater than the reference, which has a value of four volts, what's the output voltage gonna be? Well, that means that this guy here is now bigger than this. The voltage at the inverting input is bigger than the voltage at the non-inverting input, and so that output is going to, once again, be clipped at this minus 15 volts and limited by the power supply, of course. So we could say that this circuit looks a little bit like what you might call a comparator. In other words, we could have some reference and we're comparing V1 to that reference. If V1 is less than the reference, uh, the output is a plus 15. If V1 is greater than the reference, and then the output switches basically from a plus 15 uh, to a minus 15. And so you could say, I'm comparing that V1 to that reference value. All right, let me see if I can kind of show this um, uh, graphically. We'll sort of say that, uh, let's have a look at the output voltage and we're gonna look at that output voltage um, as a function of time. So let me just show it here. Here is my output voltage and here is the time axis over here, so V out. Now in this open loop mode, this output voltage cannot be anything but plus 15 or minus 15. Um, so we can't have anything in between, and that's because of this very, very, very high gain that we have over here. So, all right, so let's just show the values of plus 15, and a value here of minus 15. Okay, now let's uh, look at the value V1 over here. So we'll see if we can plot that too. So here is my uh, V1, all right, as a function of time. So that's V1. Let me also on this graph indicate where the reference value is, and that was what? That was actually a plus four. So we're gonna just simply put that down there as a plus four. So let's imagine then at this instant in time, uh, V1 is certainly less than 4, and we'll say it's got some value here like this. All right, so what would the output voltage be? Well, remember, V1 is less than this value of 4. Um, the output voltage was a plus 15. Okay, so there it is sitting at a plus 15. So let's imagine then this V1 changes with time, and at some point it reaches that value of 4 and then goes beyond. What's going to happen? Well, at this point where V1 is actually equal to that reference value, the output basically is going to do what? It's going to switch and it's going to drop down to a minus 15. And it's going to stay at a minus 15 as long as this V1 is actually greater than what? Greater than the reference voltage. So if this moves along like this, it is still greater than the reference voltage and that output stays at a minus 15. If V1 then starts to drop and fall away, well, at that value where V1 is equal to uh, the reference voltage of four, we will find then the voltage would actually, the output voltage would then switch back really to that plus 15, and it would stay at a plus 15 as long as that V1 is less than the reference voltage. All right, let's uh, see if we can take an actual operational amplifier. And I'm gonna give you an example here. We're going to look at a 741 um, op amp. Now, as far as 741 op amp is concerned, the input resistance RI is around about two mega ohms. The gain, the voltage gain AVOL, oh, that's of the order of two 100,000. And the output resistance, RO, uh, is around about 50 ohms. Okay, so let's see now um, if we can look at our example um, and uh, put this information in and see what the output voltage is. So we'll take an example whereby V1 is going to be 0 0.1 volts and the V2 over here is 0 0.11 volts. Remember, this now guy here is 2 mega ohms, uh, this output resistance over here 50 ohms, and this gain over here is uh, 200,000. Okay, so VD then, 
VD is going to be what? It's going to be the V2. So that's V2 minus the V1, which is simply equal to um, 0 0.11 minus 0 0.1, which gives me a value of 0 0.01 volts. The output voltage V out uh, then is equal to the open loop gain, a VOL, times that VD. And so that is simply equal to, what, 200,000 and that is going to be multiplied by that 0 0.01. Okay, well, what is that? What value is it? Well, that's heading off towards a value of what? Well, that's really a value of what? 2,000 volts? Well, it can't reach 2,000 volts. So once again, we're limited by the power supply. So you're limited by the power supply. And that output then, V out, is going to go to 15 volts. Okay? All right. What happens, though, if we now, on the output, add a load resistance? And in this case, we've got a load resistance of 1K. Is that going to affect anything? Is that going to affect that output voltage in this open loop mode? Well, let's have a look. What we have then is really V out with respect to this voltage here, which is 200,000 times VD, we have a voltage divider. And so we really could say that that output voltage V out is equal to the 1K, and that's divided by the 1K um, plus the 50, that's our voltage divider, multiplied by this here, which is our 200,000 times VD, and remember VD was what? It was the difference between these two uh, voltages here, so that was multiplied by that, what, 0 0.01. Well, okay, we could work this out, um, but I think you're going to see that uh, this is still going to be equal to um, that plus 15 in this case. What we have here is what? That's 1,000 divided by 1,050, uh, which is about 0 0.95, and that is multiplied by this. And what is this? Uh, this is what? 2,000. Well, you can see that we can't reach that voltage. Once again, we are limited by our power supply, and so that V out still is going to be uh, close to that 15 volts. So with these values here, uh, that real 741 op-amp is really still behaving like the ideal op-amp.